This week, I'm talking about celestial objects to avoid. No, I'm not talking about Europa or black holes, although I definitely recommend attempting no landing on either of those. But I'm actually talking about the catalog of 100 galaxies, star clusters, and nebulas that annoyed the hell out of 18th century astronomers. In the 1700s, Charles Messier got so pissed off at all these fuzzy patches of sky that got in his way as he was trying to discover comets that he decided to make a list of all these celestial objects for astronomers to avoid, essentially a not-a-comet list. It was kind of a historical version of the Chihuahua or Blueberry Muffin meme. Being a comet hunter in the 1700s was highly fashionable. You could get your name in the newspaper, you could get comets named after you, and you could even be recognized by royalty. King Louis XV actually called Charles Messier the Comet Ferret, which I suppose was a compliment. Until the 1500s, Western society thought that comets were phenomena that took place in Earth's atmosphere, not in outer space. This despite the fact that India in the 6th century actually determined that comets were things that took place in outer space. But by the 1700s, Western society was starting to catch up with comets, no longer associated them with bad omens, and they actually became something that was scientifically predictable with the foreseen return of Halley's Comet in 1758. But people continued to ascribe outlandish theories to comets. They continued to think comets were these big predictors of big events in society, and that's one of the reasons why comet hunters were given so much notoriety for discovering new comets. One cosmologist even suggested that the formation of planets in our solar system was due to comets actually hitting the sun and ejecting out a splash of solar material out into outer space. While Messier set out to be famous for discovering over a dozen comets in his time, it's actually his list of celestial objects to avoid, now known as the Messier Catalog, that made him famous today. Out of his list of over 100 galaxies and star clusters and nebulas, he discovered 40 of them. Messier cataloged what he thought were just nebulas and stars, fuzzy bits of sky that didn't move that were presumed to be at the edges of our Milky Way galaxy. At the time, it was believed that the Milky Way galaxy was the only galaxy in the entire universe that there were these nebulas on the edges, but we were the only galaxy in the entire universe. Unbeknownst to Messier, he was actually discovering entirely new galaxies, 13 in all, the same number as comets as he ended up discovering. The first object to avoid in the Messier catalog was the Crab Nebula, and the Crab Nebula is absolutely jaw-droppingly gorgeous to look at. It's amazing to think that someone would actually put it on a list of things to avoid. Other entries in the catalog were M31, known as the Andromeda Galaxy, which I did an entire video about, which you should definitely check out because the Andromeda Galaxy is amazingly cool. As for galaxies that Messier himself unwittingly discovered, there's galaxies like the Whirlpool Galaxy, known as M51A, that is 35% of our own galaxy's size. There's also the M58 galaxy, which would have been at the time the farthest known object ever discovered at 68 million light years away. Messier discovered all of these using a four inch telescope in downtown Paris. Despite being homeschooled and not exactly being a math whiz, Messier was able to be so methodical in his listing of all of these objects to avoid that he created the first comprehensive and reliable list of astronomical objects that astronomers still use to this day. Thanks so much for watching, Space Friends. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. I am still very new to YouTube, so that definitely helps me out a lot. And another way to help me is to join Patreon so that you can actually support me in creating future videos like this one that are geeky, awesome, and interesting.